Well, let's get more on this right now. Lee Brandstetter is a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I asked him what this slowing growth rate means for Japan. First of all, we do need to point out uh, that this was a very big downside surprise. Uh, third quarter, sorry, fourth quarter GDP growth uh, was only 0.3% above uh, growth last quarter, whereas markets were expecting 2.8%. So that's a very big uh, uh, downside surprise. Now, when you dig into the numbers, uh, what you see is that actually import growth was much stronger than expected. And imports are actually subtracted out of GDP. And so because imports grew uh, quite a bit more than expected uh, and exports were growing more or less in line with trend, that actually led to much lower GDP numbers than the market expected. On the other hand, uh, rapid growth in import demand is also indicative of fairly strong consumer confidence and fairly robust expansion of domestic demand in Japan. So the numbers aren't all bad. Oh. As far as export prospects are concerned, we should have seen better numbers with the yen being so weak. Why didn't that happen? Well, uh, we might have hoped for better numbers, but what's also true uh, is that uh, the geographic distribution of Japan's uh, exports have been shifting over time. As uh, emerging markets become more important for Japan and indeed for all industrialized nations as export destinations, Japan is ever more exposed to volatility and slowdowns in emerging markets. Um, and that may be part of the explanation behind what we're seeing in terms of the export numbers. Right, but looking at the overall figure, are we likely to see more pressure now on the Bank of Japan and the government uh, insofar as uh, adopting policies that will push consumption and growth? I mean, is the BOJ, for instance, going to ease monetary policy even further? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, and there's certainly room for the BOJ to ease policy even further. Uh, governor Kuroda has certainly been far more aggressive than the Bank of Japan governors that preceded him, but I think outgoing Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has expanded all our notions of what a central bank uh, leader can do to expand the economy when it's really necessary. Uh, but I think the problem uh, for a change in policy right now is that because domestic consumption is perhaps not quite as strong as the market expected, uh, but still fairly strong, and uh, import demand is actually stronger than expected, uh, the leaders of the BOJ may be tempted to leave the policy settings as they are for now and wait until the second quarter GDP numbers come in before changing their policy settings. And how does this all look for business confidence? Uh, well, uh, the headline numbers can't be good. We see reflected in Japanese financial markets and indeed global financial markets uh, a bit of a worry uh, about growth uh, at the global economic level. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we dig into the fourth quarter numbers, they suggest that business investment has continued to grow, perhaps not, my, not quite as much as we would have hoped, uh, but still at a reasonable pace. I think what business leaders may do now, though, is call for a bit more of the so-called third arrow of Abenomics. Uh, the Prime Minister has always said that the first arrow was expansionary monetary policy and the second arrow was a bit of a fiscal boost, followed by fiscal consolidation. We've seen that. But the third arrow was structural reform. And there have been some initiatives in that domain, but I think business and the markets want to see more. And so I think the pressure will now be on the Prime Minister to push that third dimension of his agenda further and faster. Right, we'll and see. looking at 2014, I mean, there's a sales hike in the pipeline for uh, April this year. It goes up from 5 to 8%. What kind of an impact is that going to have on consumption? Uh, well, in, in the first quarter, we're actually likely to see a pronounced front-loading of consumption as uh, consumers and even businesses that can purchase items in the months before this consumption type hike takes effect do so. So we could actually see very strong, artificially strong first quarter GDP numbers for 2014. In fact, at an annualized rate, uh, growth could jump up as high as 4% or more. But the real question for the Japanese economy is what happens after that consumption hike takes place. We all know that a consumption hike, a tax hike of this magnitude is going to depress demand. It's going to lead to a pronounced growth slowdown. We just don't know how severe that slowdown will be and how long it will last. Those are the real questions for the Japanese economy in 2014. And unfortunately, we won't have the answers for some time to come.